Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here is your theater of romance from Hollywood. Colgate tooth powder for a breath that's sweet and halo shampoo to glorify your hair bring you Robert Walker, the bright young star of Metro-Golden-Mayer's What Next, Corporal Hargrove? Colgate tooth powder for a breath that's sweet and halo shampoo to glorify your hair. Present your theater of romance from Hollywood. Tonight, the curtain rises on your theater of romance and its production of Martha Cheevan's great human story, Penny Serenade. Here is your play and your star, Robert Walker. sits alone on the floor sorting out phonograph records. The records that her husband, Roger Carey, calls the records of a happy marriage. But Julie and Roger are estranged now. The records of a happy marriage. <laughs> Look at this one. Ain't we got fun. I haven't heard that for years. Roger's always been crazy about it. Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? <laughs> I was playing that record the day I met Roger. It was my first job, and Roger walked in about noon, a complete stranger, but my first customer and my first love. Hello, gorgeous. What's new in Foxtrot? This is. It's called Ain't We Got Fun, and it costs 35 cents. Charge it to Mr. Roger Carey, 485 Madison Avenue. Charge it? Oh, of course. I never pay for anything until I have to. Spoils my credit. <laughs> All right. I'll wrap it up for you. All right. Wrap up yourself with it, too, will you, gorgeous? There's a place in my heart that's just been waiting for a redhead like you. Uh, <clears throat> any chance of a date? Not a chance in the world. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> I see I'm going to have to work on you. Gee, redhead, you dance like something out of my dreams. You aren't so bad yourself. Thanks. A mighty smooth record. Did I, uh, buy three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> you certainly did. You bought every record in stock. Oh, I don't know where you've been all my life. I like your family. I like your friends. I even like this party. Uh, redhead, do you believe in love at first sight? I never have. Before. Beautiful night, isn't it, Julie? Uh-huh. I never knew Central Park could be so beautiful. Say, uh, <clears throat> how long have we been going together? Hmm? Um, three weeks, seven hours, and ten minutes. Uh-huh. Why? Oh, I just wanted to see if you knew. Julie, uh, the newspaper wants to send me to Japan for a year or two. Japan? Mm hmm they told me today. There's something going on over there that they think might turn out to be important. I'll have a byline and everything, kid. Roger Carey and big black type right on the front page. Oh, well, uh, I'll miss you. Miss me? Do you think I'm going to leave a dizzy little redhead like you on your own for three years? I'm going to marry you, and as soon as I get there and get settled down, I'm going to send for you. Oh, Julie. There's never, ever been a girl like you before anywhere in the world. You're pretty, and you're cute, and you're, you're smart, and you're fun, and... Oh, honey, you're for me. Uh, you are going to marry me. <laughs> you wouldn't say no, would you, Julie? No one ever says no to you, Roger. <laughs> that's because I've got big blue eyes. <laughs> yes, darling, that's because you've got big blue eyes. The records of a happy marriage. 
funny how songs will bring things back and how you can go back across the years while you're listening. Here's the song they were playing at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco the night Roger's brother, Philip, and I had dinner there. Everything I have is yours. Philip was working in a hospital in San Francisco, and when I started for Japan, Roger asked Philip to meet me there and put me on the boat. And so we met, Philip and I. Too late. We had three wonderful days. Philip was the exact opposite of Roger. Considerate, dependable, thoughtful. When I sailed for Japan, I sailed dreading my reunion with Roger. Julie. Oh, Julie, you don't know how I've missed you, kid. I've been counting the hours. I uh, bought three new suits in your honor, honey. How do you like this one? Very handsome. Is it paid for? Are you kidding? Of course not. But don't worry about it. I've got an inheritance coming to me in a few weeks that'll more than pay for them. Did Philip tell you about Uncle Pete's will? Ha have you saved any money at all, Roger? Well, uh, <laughs> no, but I will. Well, you better start immediately, darling, because in about five months we're going to have a baby. Look, I'm... A baby? That's right. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Uh, uh, sit down, sit down. Uh, can I get you a cushion, a glass of milk? Uh, are you all right? You are happy about it. Happy? Oh, I'm going right out and set the world blazing from corner to corner. A father! Me! <laughs> Wait till I tell him down at the office, honey. It's going to be a boy. I'm going to call him Roger. Good, that's right, honey. Well, let's have a boy. It's always best to have a boy first. <laughs> Oh, Julie, I never knew that I could love anyone or anything as much as I love you. Don't stop loving me. I'll give you anything in the world you want. I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll be anything you want me to be. You do love me, don't you, Julie? Of course I do. Oh, Julie... That was Roger. Charming, lovable, impossible to resist. Never serious enough for the serious things of life. He gave no thought to the problems of having a baby. All it meant to him was the fun of being a father. Suddenly, I felt desperately alone, desperately frightened. I'd been in Japan only a few weeks when he came home one hot, uncomfortable afternoon, bursting with enthusiasm. Redhead, you are now looking at a man of means. Roger, you, you, you got your Uncle Pete's inheritance. Right. The papers came this morning, honey. We're rich. We've got $5,000. And you know what we're going to do with it? We're going to blow ourselves to a trip around the world. Oh, but Roger, I, I don't think I should travel. It, it's so hot right now. You bet it is, honey. That's why we're going to get out of here. This is earthquake weather. Earthquake weather. Afterwards, when people would say... You were in the great earthquake in Japan. Tell us about it. All I could remember was that I was starting down the stairs when I felt my feet sliding away from me and the stairs came up and hit me in the face. And I remember the whole city being on fire and Roger carrying me through the streets to a boat. And I remember crying, not from pain, but from a terrible sense of loss. Everything after that was blurred. The next thing I really knew, I was in Phillips Hospital in San Francisco and Roger was bending over me. There was a question that ached inside me. Roger? The baby? I'm... I'm sorry, kid. Oh, no. Oh. I see. I wanted that baby terribly. Yes, darling, I know I... I should never have taken you to Japan. Oh, don't say that. You didn't know. Julie, about that trip around the world, well, that wasn't such a hot idea after all. I've been inquiring around, and I've found a newspaper in Westchester. I, I, I bought it, Julie. It, it, it's slightly on the rocks right now, but I, I think I can make a go of it. I, I've got to make a go of it. 
Hello, Julie. Philip. I'm glad to see you looking better, Julie. Say, you know, while I was driving over here, I got a great idea for you two. Why don't you adopt a baby? Adopt a baby? Mm-hmm. Why... That the way it is, Roger? Yes, darling. That's the way it is. Well, then, Roger, as soon as we get to Westchester and get a little money ahead, we must go shopping for a baby. Oh, Mrs. Carey, I love you so much. I love you so very much. But, Mary, I thought you liked Joe. Well, I do. I mean, I did before that breath of trouble got him. Well, here's hoping that Joe lets Colgate Tooth Powder help him get Mary in good graces with him again. You see, anyone can be the victim of a breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. It happens to thousands without their knowing. Marks them down socially. Brings them unhappiness. And they seldom suspect the real reason. Don't let that breath of trouble catch up with you. Do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests prove that Colgate Tooth Powder in seven cases out of ten instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And when it comes to cleansing... Money can't buy a dentist that will clean your teeth better or quicker than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo bring you the second act of Penny Serenade, starring Robert Walker. Roger and I went shopping for the baby. It was one of the most exciting days in my whole life. We'd been running the newspaper in Westchester for three years, and though we still didn't have a good deal of money, we were beginning to get our feet on the ground. We'd written to an agency, and we had an appointment with a, a Miss Oliver in New York. We, uh, <clears throat> we wanted a little boy, Miss Oliver. Well, the only child available is a ten-weeks-old baby girl. As a matter of fact, there's another couple that are entitled to see this baby before you. But your letter impressed me so, and this is such an exceptional child. Why don't you come in the other room and look at her? Oh, Roger. <laughs> she fills my arms just right. Oh. Julie, uh, do you still want a boy? Maybe a little later we could have a little boy. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, Miss Oliver, I, I, I guess she's ours, if it's all right with you. Well, of course, there are certain forms to be taken care of, but I'm sure you'll be able to have her. I'd uh, like to talk to you and Mrs. Carey about her history. It's really excellent. Miss Oliver, when someone offers you a gift like this, you don't ask for its history. You just say, thank you and God bless you. called the baby Trina. No reason. We just liked the name. Looking back now, it seems to me her life was measured off by Christmases rather than birthdays. Probably that was because Christmas meant so much to Trina from her very first Christmas until... From her very first. When she started to school, it took on an even greater meaning. Daddy, Daddy, there's going to be a Cecil Carroll program. I might be choose. You might be choose for what, baby? The first three grades are to be the angels. If I can learn this song by tomorrow, I might get to be one. Well, let's see it. 
A little town of Bethlehem. Well, Trina, let's you and I learn it, huh? <clears throat> oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we Neither Trina nor Roger could carry a tune, but she got to sing with the angels. She sang with them every single Christmas after that. Come on, Daddy. Put your coat on. It's time to start. All right, honey. Oh, Daddy, I don't see how people ever got along without Christmas. Darling, I don't see how we ever got along without you. And then Trina's ninth Christmas. We had said nothing would ever take her away from us. We forgot about death. She caught a cold. There was a sudden, brief, hopeless illness. And she was gone. Roger and I sat alone in her room. Two strangers looking across that empty little bed. Here's the, um, letter she was going to mail to the Lone Ranger. I gave her three cents Monday. Might as well throw it away. Julie, I, I can't stand sitting around in this house. I'm, I'm going out. All right, Roger. Put on your overcoat. It's cold out. I'm not coming back, Julie. I don't want to ever see this place again. I don't want ever to see you again. I don't want to see anything that reminds me of... Oh, you don't mean that, Roger. You... You don't care anything for me, Julie. I knew that you... Every time I mentioned him, you sort of lighted up inside. You were in love with him when you came to Japan, but I thought if I loved you enough, maybe in time you'd forget him. Well, it was my mistake. You can go to him now. There isn't any more family. There isn't any more Trina, and I don't ever want to see you again. Is that clear? Yes, Roger. That's very clear. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps we never have had anything together. Records of a happy marriage. Oh, Roger, why didn't I tell him I wasn't in love with Philip before it was too late? Now there's nothing to do but file the records under finished business. Finished. One marriage. Julie. Roger. Um, what are you doing? Oh, I... I was just going through the records. Oh. I um, thought you would have gone to Philip by now. Roger, I'm not in love with Philip. You know, I, I think there must be someone like him in every woman's life. Someone she thinks of when the going's a little hard and she's just feeling sorry for herself. Oh, darling. Roger, sit oh, down Julie. and take off those shoes. You huh? went out without your rubbers oh, again. Oh, yeah. uh, well, What's in that package? Well, it's, it's a record. I... Uh, I thought it sort of belonged in the collection. What is it? I don't want to walk without you, baby. Oh, Roger. Oh, Julie. Darling, I, I don't know why I spoke to you like I did, except that I was nearly crazy with grief and I felt that you loved Philip. And to lose you both was more than I could take. And Trina... Julie, Trina had never been sick in her life. You know, one day before she did get sick, she wanted a quarter and I wouldn't give it to her. And a couple of weeks ago, she wanted to go to the movies, and I told her I was too busy. I know, darling. It's been the same with me. When, when she was trying on a dress and wouldn't stand still, I scolded her and said, I'm never going to try anything on you again. And, and I never did. You, you know, Roger, we've had a good marriage. We, we haven't had an easy time, but, but, but nobody has an easy time. I and... know what you mean, darling. It's the same thing I've been thinking. We've been poor now and then, and even hungry. We've had money and spent it. We've had Trina and lost her. Those kind of things either tear you completely apart or draw you very close together, Julie. When I left the other night, I felt as though I'd cut myself in half. As long as I have you, darling, I can take anything. Funny, isn't it? How many times you can fall in love during a marriage in so many different ways. Oh. <clears throat> 
Hello? <clears throat> yes, this is Roger Carey. Miss Olive? Oh, well, uh, 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 just a minute. Julie, it's Miss Oliver. She says that once we wanted a little boy, and that strictly off the record, there's a little boy there now, three years old, that just fits our description. Oh, oh Roger. Oh, honey. <laughs> Uh, what's that, Miss Oliver? Oh, well, uh, just a minute. Uh, darling, she says there's another couple who had the right to see him first, but she'll overlook that if we want to come. Oh, tell her we're on our way. Yes, uh, we're on... Excuse me. We're on our way, Miss Oliver. <laughs> come on, darling. Aren't you uh, going to put on a coat? Oh, I forgot. Of course. Button it up good, Ma. Right you are, Paul. Oh, wait a minute, honey. Let's put away this record of I don't want to walk without you, baby. We've got to take good care of these records, redhead. They're the records of a very happy marriage. The Colgate Halo Theater of Romance has just presented Robert Walker as the star of Gene Holloway's adaptation of Penny Serenade. Robert Walker returns in just a moment. Halo, everybody, halo. Halo is the shampoo that glorifies your hair, so halo, everybody, halo. Use halo shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. The soap shampoos leave a film on your hair, but halo contains no soap therefore leaves no dulling soap film. The very first time you use Halo, you'll notice your hair glistens in all its natural brilliance. The deep, full, natural color and luster comes sparkling through like sunshine through a clean window pane. And remember, even in the hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather. Halo quickly carries away loose dandruff, grease, and dirt. Needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Because Halo leaves no dulling soap film. Nothing to hide your hair's natural beauty. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Use Halo on your children's hair, too. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Remember, Halo glorifies your hair. So hello, everybody, hello. Halo shampoo. Halo. Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. Join in a warm welcome to Robert Walker in this, his second engagement of the season, on Theater of Romance. A sincere thank you to Metro Golden Mayor, producers of your latest picture, What Next Corporal Hargrove, for making this appearance possible, Bob. Well, thank you, Frank. I was glad to be back on stage for the Colgate Halo Theater of Romance. My sincere thanks to Kathy Lewis for her great performance. Uh, your regular customers are in for a wonderful holiday lineup, I see. Next week marks the first radio appearance of a man who did a great job in the Navy. It's Robert Taylor starring in Magnificent Obsession. The week after that, wonderful Susan Peters returns in Leo McCary's wonderful story, Love Affair. Her leading man is another grand guy, Van Johnson. See you soon, good night, and good listening. Bulletin for the Future. Next week, Charles Vanders' production of Theater of Romance for Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo stars Robert Taylor in Magnificent Obsession to be followed by Van Johnson and Susan Peters in Love Affair. Keep a date with Theater of Romance for all the weeks to come. You'll always hear your favorite stars. These presentations of Theater of Romance come to you because of your enthusiastic recognition of Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. This is your host saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, romance. <laughs> Ladies, I know you're all happy that meat rationing has ended. No more red points, no more ration rumpusing. Wonderful, but wait a minute. Let me read you a message from Secretary of Agriculture Anderson who says, even though rationing has ended, there still remains the need for preventing waste of any fats and for salvaging all used fats so essentially needed for the manufacture of soap and for other industrial uses. If your dealer doesn't have all the soap you want, it's doubtless due to a shortage of fat. 
So here's your big chance to hasten supplies of soap. Save and sell all the waste cooking fats you can. Remember, where there's fat, there's soap. Your butcher will still pay you four cents a pound for used cooking fat, so fill a tin and turn it in. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 